Hi children, welcome to Eclipse Learning. So this is the third chapter for grade nine and this is only the workbook activities, right? So if you haven't watched my previous videos, I have separate uh, playlist for uh, from grade six onwards. And uh, there are two uh, playlists uh, for uh, two playlists for uh, one grade, for example, uh, workbook activities and textbook activities like that. So uh, if you haven't watched the programming textbook video, please go and watch it first. And then you try these activities by yourself and then please come back and watch this video, right? So please don't copy the answers directly from the video and write because it won't help you any, in any way, right? Okay, so programming, uh, activity 3.1. By referring to uh, the flow chart, indicate whether the given statements are true or false. So here we have some uh, flow chart. So you should uh, first understand what this is. Quickly go through it, right? So here we have start and end nodes. And here instruction one is executed, right? Then there is a condition, yes, no. So if the condition is true, it will execute the condition. If the condition one is true, then it will execute the condition two. If the condition one is false, then only instruction two will be executed. So if the condition two is false, instruction three will be executed. If the condition one is true, then instruction four will be executed. So after executing each of these instructions, the uh, process will end, right? So that's what this tells. So condition one in the flow chart is executed first, no why instruction one will be executed first. So that is false. Instruction one does not execute under any condition. Yes, that's true because this is just executed without thinking, uh, without considering any conditions. Condition one executed after instruction one. Yes, after you execute instruction one, condition one will be executed. Execution of instruction three depends only on condition two, false. Why? Because if the condition one becomes false, then instruction three will never execute it. Can you see? It will finish in this part. So for this scenario to be happen, for instruction three to be executed, a condition one should become true and condition two should become false. Then only instruction three will be executed. So here there's the word only, no, wrong, because uh, execution of instruction three depends on condition one and two both, right? So that's why this is becoming false. Uh, for instruction uh, four to be executed, both condition one and two should become true. Yes, both should become true. Then only this will be executed. Whatever the outcomes of the conditions may be, instruction one and one another instruction will be executed. Now we'll see. Yes, always instruction one will be executed. That part is true. And if the condition one is true and this become false, instruction three will be executed. If both conditions are true, instruction four will be executed. If condition one is false, instruction two will be executed. So always, yes, uh, condition based on the conditions in any way, instruction one will be executed and uh, these two, either one of these three will be executed right so that's true okay so uh, they're asking you to download the scratch already you may have downloaded and worked right because in the um, programming video we have done so many examples under scratch consider that school has four houses namely metta karuna mudita and upeksha um, a flow chart to assign uh, students to their to their houses in is given below Houses are assigned based on reminder after dividing the admission number by four. So this is the same method used in our school also uh, to uh, allocate the houses. So what they do is they take the admission number, they divide by four, right? And check the remainder. So this is the mod, right? Please, uh, this is not a division. We consider the mod value, right? Mod value means the remainder. For example, three, four, two, you divide by four, your uh, answer is 84, but what is the remainder? You have two remainder. So based on the remainder, for example, if it is if it is a number which is nicely divided by four, then it's metta. If you have one as the remainder, it will be karuna. 
if we, uh, you have two as the remainder, it will be mudita. And if you have three as the remainder, it will be peksha, right? For example, this student had uh, the remainder of two. That means uh, the student is assigned to mudita house, right? So that's the uh, scenario. We'll check. Uh, they have given you the flowchart as well. Begin. You get the admission number, right? So this is the input. Right, and then you do the process. You take the admission number, you divide it, and check the remainder mod value. Right, and if the remainder is zero, yes, then it's metta. How is metta? But if it's no, then you check okay whether the remainder is one. If it's yes, it's uh, the house is karuna. If uh, again remainder is not one, you check whether the remainder is two. Yes, then it's mudita. If the remainder is three, that means no scenario for this. That means the, your house is upeksha. So this is for one student, and they will check, okay, are there more students? If yes, do this again and again. If no, okay, then stop the process. You have uh, given houses for all the students, right? Okay, a number that cannot exist as a remainder. Now you are dividing by four. So can you get four as the remainder? No, only you can get is zero, one, two, three. Because if, uh, now, for example, four, if you divide by four, it's nicely dividing and no remainder. Remainder is zero. So four cannot come when you divide by four as the remainder. Okay, so that's the answer. A suitable remainder for a student assigned to Upeksha house. So Upeksha house is three. So you will get the remainder as three. How many conditions are there in the flow chart? Very easy. How many uh, conditions? Only four conditions. Right? So uh, that is very easy. Uh, the scratch program to divide all students in the school into houses is shown below. Connect with arrows with the instructions given relevant for uh, blank spaces. Now you start with this flag. right? Now these are very familiar things if you have watched my programming uh, video. Then you ask, okay, how many students? Right, and you set that to a variable that answer to a variable called number of students. Then you repeat this until your number of uh, students finishes. Now, hope you remember repeat. You can do definite times. So uh, here, until the number of students, maybe 50, 20, like that, until 20 students are done, you will do this. Then you ask, okay, what is the admission number? And that answer you take it and you divide and get the remainder, that is mod. There's an operation called mod itself, like division, subtraction, addition, you have something called mod. You mod with four and you get the answers to the remainder. So if the remainder is zero, if the remainder is zero, go back to this, it's metta, right? So you, here you have to put, okay, say metta house for two seconds. So this block should come here. Else, if the remainder is not zero, okay, then you go and check if the remainder is one. Metta karuna. So then the house will be karuna. Say karuna for two seconds. If that is also not the case, then you check, okay, if remainder is two, metta karuna mudita. So you have to say, okay, your house is mudita. And if the remainder is three, it will go for this else part, right? So then you have to say, okay, uh, say upeksha for two seconds, right? So metta, karna, mudita, upeksha. So that's how the houses will be allocated. So develop a scratch program to divide the students in your school. So my school, this is the same scenario, kind of only the house names will be different, but uh, some schools may have more or less number of houses. So then this will be a bit different, right? So my one, I have four houses, only the names will be different. Okay, 3.4, develop a program with an array to enter five subjects learned in grade five. So for this one, you have to open Scratch, right? Hope you remember Scratch now, right? Uh, so we have to uh, go and develop a, a, a list, right? So hope you remember, we have the list under variables. So make a list, right? So uh, they have not given any name. Right, 
So make a list. We'll uh, for this or for only this sprite. We'll put something like subjects, right? And okay. So we have the array here, right? Then we have to add uh, things to this array, right? So they want to get uh, five subjects details, right? That's what they are telling. Enter five subject details here. So uh, we always have to start with this. Right, right. When this is clicked, right, and then you have to uh, get the input. Okay, you're asking. And then you add it to the at this answer. To the subject array. So this will happen only one time, right? So that's why I told you we need a repeat block, right? So we have to do this five times, right? Same thing you have to do five times. Like this. So we'll uh, run this and see. You can run it like this from here. Enter the subject name. So you will tell, okay, maths. Again, it is asking science. Then you ask in Singhala. Uh, then you ask uh, the subject name and you put environment. And uh, yeah, Buddhism. So that's the end, right? So they ask it just uh, develop a program with an array to enter five subjects, not to display back. So this is just uh, that particular scenario. Construct a suitable program based on an array to output seven days of the week. A name of the array as day. So same program I'm going to change, right? So I'm going to... Uh, have a new array called day, right? For only for this period, right? And yeah, and it will be executing seven times. Enter. Yeah, so here I am asking, okay, enter the uh, day of the week. into the day of the week. And this answer will be put into the new array called day. So this is only the um, adding part to the array. Uh, so for that, I need another uh, block to print this seven times, right? So I will be um, Right, so for this one, uh, we need a count, right? Count variable. So I will create another variable called count to iterate through the list. And uh, I'm setting count to zero first from outside. And uh, then I uh, uh, try to read. Uh, repeat, uh, you can put seven or you can put length of day. Both are okay, but this is like more uh, not hard coded, that's why. And uh, then we uh, then I say item of count of day for uh, this much, and then I Change count by one. Did you understand? So first part, yes, I repeat until seven times and fill the um, list. Then I have a counter zero, right? Uh, to read the array because zero, one, two, three, four, five, like that I'm going to iterate. So that is why I'm changing the count by one after every iteration. 
So I will repeat until seven times. That is the same as length of the day. And I say the first, now if it's zero, item zero of day one, day. So that will be executed, first day. Then it change again. I read item one of day, item two of day. Like that, it will be continuously happening, right? Um, yeah. We'll execute the program and see. End of the day of the week, right? I'm putting uh, just month and then Tues, then Vens, Thurs, Fry, Sat, and Sun. So seven times on it will be iterating. See? And seven days were taken. So see, now it's happening. The printing part also happening. Hope you have seen. This is happening because I didn't clear this uh, array. So if you want to clear the array, right, delete all can be happen in the initial thing. Now we'll see. So it clears the thing. Then you can again put. I'm doing from uh, beginning like because there may be some new students. Uh, that's why. Otherwise, all these things were uh, discussed in my previous videos. See, now uh, again, it's printing each day like this. Okay. Then we'll go back to the book and see. Uh, find the answers based on the array called color. So they have given some array, color, repeat uh, seven times, enter the colors, and they just add it to the color array. So that's only first part, like the same thing what we did for the days. How many times the above program is repeated when it's executed? It will repeat seven times. That's what they are telling. How many colors can be assigned to the array? Seven colors will be added because seven times this will be uh, executed like the week. Same thing. Select the suitable statements and match them with the instructions given below. To delete all the items in the array, I have already explained, delete all of color. Number of items in the array. So you can hard code this or you can take the length of animal. The first item in the array. So item one, right? Some Now, uh, for example, here, if you make it one, and if we repeat seven times, we'll uh, check it. Tails, vans, thus, try, set, sun, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday. See, now uh, if you do that way, because um, normally in arrays, uh, I talk this in uh, my uh, uh, other video as well. Normally in the arrays, we take the index from zero onwards. But if you uh, in scratch, you have to take from one onwards, right? So that is why you can take the first item in the array by like this, like this, okay? Entering items into the array, Yes, you can add answers to the color like this. Okay. So that's the end of the chapter. Uh, we'll meet again with another video. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed my uh, channel, please do subscribe and please share these videos uh, because uh, I know it's very important in this uh, time uh, to get this knowledge. Right. Okay. Thank you very much.